All right, it's probably no secret that airlines try to fit as many fannies into their planes as they can possibly get. But now there's the Skyrider. It's a saddle-like seat. Have you seen this? It maximizes passenger capacity. Apparently, if you really wanted to push it, double the capacity of the normal plane if they use them to the max. Uh, so uh, our generation is hex. And by the way, not just young gen hexers. I'm talking like people like me who say I'm never getting in that thing. <laughs> Internet radio host sensation Mike Gunzelman. We got political strat strategist Ash Wright. And last but not least, Ruby Media Group's Chris Ruby. Chris, this sounds crazy, but I think it's the future. Is it the future, really? I think it is. If this I is do. the future, that's not a bright future. I mean, would but if you, you could get a, your ticket half price, would you do that? Absolutely not. Really? I think there are two different groups of consumers, right? There's luxury, and then there's the other group, which would want to do this if it's cheaper. I'm not part of that group. I. Rather, I mean, it's like riding a bike. Yeah, yeah, no, this is this is a terrible idea all around. You talk about an atomic wedgie. You know what I mean? You're going to be sitting on this thing, dangling. Cheap, you're <laughs> cheap, like, I mean, no, no, because here's the problem. All right, airlines are trying to do too too, too much right now. There's right. two things we want: more legroom and fix the Wi-Fi. All right, focus on that. Right. Don't be dangling us. Like, what do you do? Like, oh, your leg cramps up. It's that just going to be a terrible. nightmare. And it's going to they'll put more people on the plane. It'll weigh it down, and it'll cost more in fuel. So the ticket price isn't going to come down. Oh, so at anyways. least if you, if so, you get a, a, a deal on a ticket. And, and can you imagine, as these people come in the plane, you pass first class, you pass the normal Dangle seat. It, yeah. You right back <laughs> yeah. over or here. Or, or the seat I, breaks I, off. I mean, like, what <laughs> is that about? Even, if you, I mean, even if you gave me that seat for free, I still wouldn't take it. Yeah, That's how I'm, oh, absolutely. You're an elitist. I'm Does that make me an elitist? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right, I also, guys, want to get your thought on this. Maybe you should have this while you're in this said jet with these <laughs> seated planes. Do uh, you ever wish that there was some sort of device that could help you from doing something bad? If you're going to reach for a donut, like, <laughs> All of that. Well, apparently there is, and this is it. Take a peek. <laughs> That's the producer having a lot of time on his Oh, boy. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew White. Or in the meantime, uh, it's called the Pavlog, I guess. Maybe it's a play up Pavlovian response. Yeah. Anyway, it's a wristband to, to zap you out of habits like sleeping in or smoking or eating sweets or donuts. Amazon is already apparently selling them for 200 bucks a pop. Would you guys buy one? No good. No. no. Really? No. I don't. I, listen, it is my God-given right to be to have as many bad habits as I want. All right. I don't even get shocked left and right over this. I mean, but also like from a from a larger, more serious standpoint, what about self-control or learning to discipline yourself? Yeah. Like, especially if you're younger, you have to go through that. You don't want to be getting zapped. Parents are gonna you know, like kids don't so, eat their vegetables. Their parents are gonna be zapping them left and right. I think what's so interesting about this is the remote shocking capability. So that is what is most fascinating. So basically, that's like I could give you. The option remotely to shock me if I do really? something wrong. Like, yeah. let's say I say something wrong in this segment, you could shock me. I've done that with him, but that's why he's coming back. Well, but what I don't understand, how does it work? That if you, is it pre programmed that if you're going to reach for a donut or you're going to, I don't know, do whatever? Apparently, it'll be like with your snooze button. So if you yeah. hit the snooze button, it can be pre programmed to send you a shock. But how will it distinguish you reaching for a donut and you reaching for a carrot? It's, I think it's supposed to self, like, that's kind of you shock yourself type thing. It's like, oh, I did it again. Yeah. Oh, no. or, another, oh, no. or another user. But yeah, I mean, but, it, yeah, but what if you're doing this by itself? It also assumes that people really know what. Behavior they need to modify, which I think is the challenging part. People don't always know that, right? So I right. think if you took this and maybe, you know, paired it up with some genetic testing, that would be interesting, where you could see from a DNA perspective, okay, you have these certain You're being things. You're far too intelligent. Yeah, what is this? <laughs> these words that are happening. I don't know. That's a Gen X. I'm doing a full examination. I really want to do it. All right. Meanwhile, police in California are turning to tech to fight crime. They're deploying this HP Robocop to the streets to keep a watchful eye on public areas. Now, Amazon is considering a similar device. So do you want a robot following you around? I don't know. <laughs> Once again, I, I'm all, I hate all these all ideas. Stuff. What's wrong with yeah. me today? But I don't think I'm on this idea. I think this is a slippery yeah, slope down technology and policing. I think it can get out of hand very quickly. You can't talk to a robot. You won't be able to argue your case. Or in case they miss something, you can't, you know, you, you have no. But but positive, it, will, it will interact with you. Say hello, tell you, have, you know, well, well, you're having well, a good day. Alan 2001 did that. You know, as far yeah. as privacy, look, we already have red light cameras. Mm -hmm. We're on security cameras everywhere we go. I feel like this is, this 
is a future, and I'm actually glad that a city is taking steps in, in actually it's advancing technology. technology. It's Listen, to protect I think it. on the positive side, it can free up certain, you know, police officers to free up their time for more dangerous crimes that are being committed, right? And so you use this Robocop in correlation. Uh, I don't need robots following me. Well, but if the, it's the idea to, you know, let's say safety in a neighborhood, and you have yeah. one of these things patrolling the neighborhood, it could let your neighbors know, hey, there's someone at my house or whatever. That's true. I would just be careful who you're in the park with. Yeah. Or, or you go up and you, you, go. you push it over. Look at that thing. Like, <laughs> push it on its side. More sinister look, right? I, you got it. Mr. T, it is not. Right. All right. Uh, meanwhile, apparently a lot of younger folks are turning away from deodorant. The new poll that shows a certain generation is saying, you know, I don't need this stuff, whatever. And they've lost friends left and right. Anyway, a personal hygiene company called Smith's Naturals is collaborating with Justin Bieber, who apparently does not stink, uh, to get young people to at least try their products. You make it up. This is great. This is where millennials are, are, are heading. They want more natural products. And I don't necessarily think it's saying that they're not wearing deodorant at all, right? I think they just want deodorant that doesn't necessarily have Yeah, but they're skewing it. that if it has all sorts of chemicals in it. Yeah, they don't want the phthalates. They don't want parabens. They don't want aluminum. And that's why also know, but there's... but then they stink and make right, it yeah. uh, for us. Why? There's <laughs> essential oils they could be using. Uh, I just don't want to hang with anybody who purposely wants to smell bad. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, what, what, that, you're not a fun night I, if that's happening. They don't like, want cancer. It's not just <laughs> Yeah, like, you know what I, mean? <laughs> I, I was going to get older, and it was going to be like, oh, I couldn't keep up with social media or technology. I didn't realize I was going to be like, now I'm old enough to remember when people wanted to smell good. But yeah. is, is it based on chemicals? Is that what's driving totally it? Totally based on chemicals, yeah, because there's all these correlations and links between cancer and aluminum in, you know, these products. So you also have the rise of what we call pit cleanses, which is detox, sure. detoxification for armpits now with wow. bentonite clay. You examine all this. You guys yeah. this very deep. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just smell good. Uh, uh, really? I mean, we work with a lot of you, and it, we don't want that. All right, The Five is coming up. We'll see you tomorrow on Cavuto Live.